a politician that I know fairly well through the spiritual realm of spirituality and religion has asked me to talk a little bit about the research and the understanding I have of what's called a trans man. Most people do not know what that is, and if it's not your cup of tea, please don't listen to me. What I'm doing is answering political questions in many things, so please do not intervene for me. What I've been asked to talk about is the concept of transition. The concept of transition is helping a unique person who is in the position of having a male soul trapped in a female-oriented or a female-challenged body or a mixed-matched body that happened through the birth canal because of over of some mother who got overstressed or abused while the baby was in there is sort of what we're talking about here. Many other birth defects do exist in America and across America, and we now call them children with special needs. As a difference, we have to figure out how to help people in every way. But when it comes to situations, we are talking about a medical condition, not a mental health condition. Several years ago, possibly 20 years ago, it became something that was usually offered in the mental health manual called the DSM-4, and that was probably surely 20 years ago, as something that was often called body dysmorphia, or in the terms of what most people prefer, gender identity disorder. And that isn't really the best way to handle it anymore. There were a lot of standards of care at the time when many people who are kind of amongst the most successful and the most well-known gentlemen came along in the timeline of the world. But what I can tell you is that a transition is usually required. And that is sort of a life test of will this person do okay and will they be able to handle themselves successfully in a man's world in any way. You see, a man's world is a very different place than a woman's world. And women or children who are raised as girls but really never felt that way in their souls and their hearts and their minds do not usually act that way from about age two or three. It is a typical condition of the position of transgenderism, which is another way they talk about this. So what I can tell you about what I know from the research at that, that at that time that was coming out when I did my project for someone is that there was about 30 to 40 years of research on file at that time when they came about with the Henry Benjamin Standards of Care, which is an excellent program for people who truly follow it correctly. Many men do not because they often come out of a lesbian community and they struggle with letting go of those relationships. Some of their gay friends accept them, others of them don't, and that's their note in society. For other people, however, who have this condition, they never once went into that community and they always literally conducted themselves, behaved themselves, and sort of acted as boys or young men. And openly, they would be your tomboys that clearly made you feel like they were boys or men. And openly, they weren't ever presenting as what society might li label as a dyke lesbian or a boy, B-O-I. But what I can tell you, because I don't know those worlds at all and don't really care to by my rare experiences with those people in truth and in all, is that a man who is a transitioning man goes through the Henry Benjamin Standards of Care. And that care program says you're going to participate in life for two years and literally after a good two years of therapy, you have the right to then get access to hormones. And once you get access to hormones, you begin the full-on transition where you have to prove your position that you can financially support yourself as a man. Now, that is a very important part of any person who has that disorder or what we would call having you allowed yourself to put your heart, mind, and soul back in order to the right body for you. Most transgender men are humiliated 
by the female condition and literally are ready to kill themselves over how they feel inside. Now that doesn't mean that they're suicidal, it just means how much they hate themselves and they don't look at their bodies with pride. Every child, regardless of their condition, whether they're heterosexual or homosexual, has nothing to do with the transition or the gender disorder that they used to talk about that way in mental health. And really what I see today, and many people like me see today as simply a body disorder, in other words, a birth defect that we have to correct. To correct it is easy. In truth, sometimes easier for the M to, sorry, the FTM, sorry, I had to think about the term, which is female to male, who is literally what we now call a trans man, meaning that they have this condition. But the reason I have great difficulty with those terms in society is that what it does is actually technically out someone's genitalia, which is not the least bit professional in our society, and it certainly is a huge thing of impropriety. You see, we have propriety in America of what we do and don't share, and we have the privacy of our medical records and the privacy of our naked bodies, so the whole aspect of Benjamin Berry of Harry Benjamin's standard of care was the individual had the right to choose who they would tell about that very private nature of themselves, whatever that might look like or whatever that might actually technically be in opposition of what someone who's just regular functioning in society might think of what they might have down there. Now what a person has down there is really their own business. But here's the craziness of the religious world of both Christendom and Muslims who attack these people, harm these people, sexually assault these people, mutilate these people, and abuse these people often without the individual's right to even fight back because they basically use some chemistry, they use some sort of subliminal technology, and they try to ruin them and their bodies or put them back in some sort of retrograde. What I can tell you is what those hormones do for them is it gives the person a much more even keel personality. It actually helps them to be more effective in their life. It allows them to see themselves in the mirror and openly that's a huge positive impact on their life. They go from underperforming to really performing and leading and doing things usually typically well if they follow the practice which is best recommended when they make the choice not to tell. You see, this don't ask, don't tell is what the military talked about in terms of gayness, but transgenderism is nothing to do with sexuality. It's simply about the body not matching how the person feels and thinks and does things inside. The outside of their body is lying. Therefore, physicians with great specialty and skill are usually hired after the person gets on hormonal rebalancing therapy, in other words, the replacement therapy of hormones is what they're doing there, and openly once that happens, the individual really becomes more successful with men or with women or whatever they're into, or boys or girls, wherever they're going. But there still is some special nuances of being a partner or mate of a person with that condition, of course, but none of that part of their human sexuality is anyone's business, unless they choose to share it with people, or if it's not obvious to people, or if it's unclear to people. But when it comes to the condition of transgenderism or trans men, what I can tell you is the whole aspect of transition, not only in the redistribution of hormones to rebalance them to the proper gender, is that openly the person doesn't usually tell people that information. What used to be the kind of typical success tract of those people is that there was only roughly three people outside of a family of origin that might know, that would know. And those three people or three types of people are pretty straightforward. It would be whoever the human's lover or significant other or spouse would be in intimate and physiological sex relations. 
then it would be the person's doctor, which might actually come before that, you never know, who actually helps to manage the condition of hormone balancing, in other words, hormone replacement therapy, or possibly the physicians that help to modify the body with plastic surgery to look more natural for that person. And then the third person is the undertaker or the person who's handling their will and estate. Because at some point, there, when the person dies, there could be an autopsy. So that's sort of the reason that people keep things private, not at all. It's just the recommendation of the program to do that. Why they do that are two reasons. To keep the person safer on every level of their life. To keep the people that they're in love with and those children that are part of their families safer from the creeps and monsters of society and the abusers and the violent people that don't get the condition. At the same time, it allows people the right to privacy in their relationships. And openly, it is often very hard for one person in a person's set of family of origin. And sometimes those people who become adults completely lose their family of origin. But you know what? That's no different than any other human being who goes off into the world and makes a family of choice with a significant other, with a lover, if you will, or a partner, or a wife, or a, or a husband today. That is the standard American family condition. Whereas in Japan, for example, they might still be living in second and third generational household compounds because land is very expensive there. So that's what I've been asked to talk about mainly is the common sense aspect of when we have a physical birth defect that is impacting the heart, mind, and soul or the person's self-image or body image or dysphoria, the concept of dysphoria then the person has absolutely the right to seek the proper medical doctors to help them to put in balance what they need to be a success both day and night.